right shorthand higher dictation uh, 120 words per minute seven minutes uh, ap april 1961 five seconds now write down i am happy to be here <coughs> and speak to you a few words on this important occasion of the 6th annual convocation of the punjab university i offer my congratulations to graduates of the year who by strenuous work and disciplined effort have attained their degrees and some of them have achieved distinctions also your university has had to face many difficulties of an unexpected character after partition you had to improvise practically a new university shifting your teaching department to different centers and starting new professional institutions naturally your colleges have suffered from overcrowding bad housing ill equipped and inadequate staff these difficulties affect the maintenance of high standards yet the work which you have done in very difficult circumstances must be to you a matter of pride and satisfaction i hope that in the new capital whose building has attracted attention far and wide the universities we have its permanent headquarters with enough accommodation for its growing needs your chancellor has had great interest in university education and this experience will be of considerable help to you in your attempts to develop the teaching side and exercise adequate supervision over the affiliated colleges building and equipment are not all good teachers who are interested in the welfare of the students who have enthusiasm for their subjects and who are able to impart it to the public they form the central framework of a university our commercial minded generation reserves its respect for those who make money and to the best ability is drawn into administration business and the learned profession we have to realize that the kind of education we provide for our children is determined overwhelmingly by the kind of men and women we secure as teachers the low esteem in which teachers are held is the most eloquent evidence of the malady from which our society suffers we must get the right type of men for the teaching profession and not the incompetent and the unambitious respect for the teachers cannot be ordered it must only be earned the next few years will be a testing time more severe and more exacting than we have known for many years political freedom which we won to much cost and sacrifices is only an opportunity it is not a fulfillment if we are to develop a strong democracy political social and economic it is necessary for us to work hard and work unitedly the ideal imposes on us sacred responsibility men are not made democratic by the mere formulation of ideals in the constitution they are not made good by mere exhortation a great ideals of justice equality fraternity and freedom which we have inscribed in our constitution must be woven into the social fabric we must apply them to the uh, myriad situations of our daily life unfortunately the state of mind in which we find our jaloj at the time of political liberation is not marked by revolutionary fervor the spirit of enjoyment has prevailed over the spirit of sacrifice we seem to demand more than what we give there is much evidence of low moral dissatisfaction and discontent among people 
all leading to serious slackness. We must overcome the spiritual slackness, which seems to be enfeebling over community. <coughs> if we do not change our minds, we cannot change anything. A nation is built in its educational institutions. We have to train our youth in them. We have to impart to them the tradition of the future. Through all the complexities and diversities of race and religion, language and religion, language and geography, the forces which have made our people into a nation and which alone can keep them one or being shaped. These do not belong to the material sphere. The unity is not one of physical geography. It belongs to the realm of ideas. It is a matter for men's mind and hearts. Our country has suffered when internal dissensions predominated and the central unity declined. We used to complain that those who ruled us for centuries adopted the principle of divide and rule. At any rate, it is true that our subjection was due to our division. We must therefore guard ourselves against separatist tendencies of language, religion and province. It is in the universities that we should develop a corporate feeling and a feeling of social purpose. Our universities must give inspiration to a generation which stands in sore need of it. In the different branches of our planning effort, we require trained men and it is for the universities to supply them. Naturally, young people wish to get themselves trained in scientific, technological and professional courses. Many of the changes that have transformed our daily lives, our hopes and ideals for the future and the results of the dominating role which science has come to play in our life. No such radical changes have ever before occurred, but an exclusive or one-sided emphasis on scientific studies results in grave disadvantages. Power and wealth begin to exercise a kind of intoxication on the minds of men. 